Thank you for coming to Farm Smart Conference. My name is Emilio Jose Garcia. And I'm Samantha Christofferson. And if you are seeing this video, it's because we couldn't come because Samantha was expecting on last Tuesday and baby didn't come. And it's She's coming. on her own agenda. Yeah, so this is bad timing, but this is why we have created this plan B. And there is one bonus about having this plan B uh, is that you are getting both of us because I was supposed to be the only one because she couldn't come, of course. But now you are getting both of us uh, in the presentation. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you joined us for the work life balance uh, talk, welcome back. Uh, this talk is called how to declutter and organize any space where we dive into how to find out what's really important to us when it comes to setting up our spaces and how to be able to let go of the things that we no longer need, use or want. Yeah, this is one of our most popular talks, so let's just dive into. So these photos that you are seeing on screen, uh, they are before and after of projects that we have completed in the past. As you can see, uh, it's pretty messy before. The before and after is always something that generally gets a reaction from people. It's very easy to look at the before picture and maybe have uh, thoughts or judgments about why something happened like that. But the reality is what we've seen since organizing since 2012 in Waterloo Region is that it's really common and there's always a reason behind why it gets to that point. But what's important is that people are looking for help and they want to make a change and we really want to help facilitate that for them. Yeah. So my name is Emilio Jose Garcia, I think I said that already, and then she's my wife, Samantha Christofferson, and in 2012, we started a business called KW Professional Organizers. Since then, we have had the opportunity to help uh, hundreds of families. We also have online courses and presentations like this one because we like to reach more people. A lot of times, people call us saying, I live somewhere else and I can just have you here. Uh, what do you have? So that's why we decided to create online courses, uh, to write a book, and uh, to create presentations like this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for some people, organization comes very naturally. It's not a difficult task to try and get back on track when things become cluttered. Uh, but for others, they've never learned methods or strategies for being able to do this. And working with all different ranges of people with all different learning uh, abilities and different injuries and this kind of stuff, we've learned a system that really is foolproof. We've tried doing it different ways, and we never get the same results. So what we're going to share with you today is our six steps for taking people through a decluttering project, decluttering and organizing, mm -hmm. and you're going to see uh, a farm example actually first. Yeah. So before getting started, as Samantha says, we're going to tell you how to do this, but the most important step is for you to be ready for change. So if there is something that is not working in your life, it doesn't matter how bad it is, what matters is that you are willing to try something different. And that's why we are here and hopefully you get the help that you need. And we're not the only business out there. Um, there's actually an association that we're members of that um, brings together professional organizers across Canada from Vancouver to uh, Newfoundland. Um, and also we've been very, very fortunate to be the winners of the Record Reader Awards um, for the last two years in a row, which is yeah. really cool. The Thank first, you for voting for the, the first two years that they had uh, an organizing category. Um, but also what we've seen with working with clients is this direct connection between mental health and physical clutter. So we both took it upon ourselves to get trained in mental health first aid, just to be able to learn uh, warning signs and red flags and, and recognize when, um, you know, sometimes these things are, are, are integrated with each other. Yeah. Uh, so we really recommend if you've never heard of that before, it's a really excellent training. It's two days long and it's just like your St. John's ambu ambulance training. Yeah, it's really good. It's a but weekend. mental health. It was like a, a, a full weekend and I, re I did learn a lot from it. Okay, so how to get started? Okay, mm. so let's get started. As Samantha was saying, there are six steps. We have not created this. I want to tell you that. This is coming from the experience that we have had working with hundreds and hundreds of different clients, families, individuals, single moms, single dads, like farming, whatever. There are so many examples. And after trying, failing, testing different ideas, this is the, the method and the order that we consistently follow now. And we can tell you 100% that we are able to help everybody. And because these steps are really important and we're going to dive into that. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. first one is reflect and understand. So you need to really understand your situation and you need to be aware of why the situation got to this point. 
this is really important because there is always a reason, as Samantha was saying. So please don't be hard on yourself or don't judge others because there is always a reason why the situation got to that point. Once you are aware, you need to define the goals. What do you want? Why do you want to do this process? What is that light at the end of the tunnel? Because doing the actual decluttering is going to be tough. You have to make decisions. And if you don't have a clarity about what you want for your space, what kind of activities you want to do, it's going to be very difficult to implement and it's going to be very difficult to decide about what to keep and what to let go. Then we are doing the decluttering. That's basically eliminating everything that you no longer need in your life. The goal of this process is not to let go of things. That's not the purpose. It's to help you identify what's important for you, what activities you want to do, and what kind of lifestyle do you want to live. And then making sure that, that your physical surroundings can facilitate that. Once you are left only with the things that you want, that's when we organize. We find permanent homes for everything, and we give you clear and easy access to all the objects that you want to keep. The step number five is to make sure that you are displaying the things that you love. It's beautifying. This is one of the most fun steps for majority of our clients. And the step number six and the last one is really, really important. It's about maintaining, creating new habits and new routines. Why so important? Because you have been doing your lifestyle currently for how long? It's been months, years, doing the same thing over and over and over. So now you are gonna create a huge change and that change needs to be permanent. How do you make it permanent? By repeating, by making sure that you are maintaining the system and by tweaking it as much as you need. So that's the, maintain, the maintenance aspect of it. I had a baseball coach who used to say, um, practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. So the more you practice the new, the new routines, the new habits, the living the new lifestyle, um, the more permanent it becomes. It won't become perfect. So these are the seven, the six steps that you can follow, and we're going to dive into all of them. But before, we, got, we want to get you excited with a real example. And this was a farm and a home business. So this is, a, when we got started with this project, uh, we started with the bedroom. The bedroom, sorry, we don't have photos of that. But then the second thing that we did was the home office. You have to remember that this is a very personal service. Uh, so the reasons why we don't have pictures of the bedroom is actually because the client wasn't comfortable with us taking them and or sharing them. Uh, even though we don't take anything that shows, you know, a person or the home address or anything, we take these photographs with the intent of helping other people be able to connect. If this picture is something that says, wow, this is something like what I look at every day, or whoa, this is like way more stuff than I have, I guess I'm not I'm, I'm not such a, a clutter person as I, I once thought. Um, it's all about just trying to bring awareness to the fact that we can all end up in hard times and we all need the ability to have a fresh start. This can happen to any of us anytime, as Samantha says. So please don't judge. If someone has this situation, just make sure that you are there to help them. And the fact that you are here, that proves that you are ready to try something different. And it doesn't matter how bad it is. So these are, these are the goals that she wanted. So she wanted to have a clear desk. Yeah, so what's really important is that, you know, sometimes you don't know what the goals are. And that's one of the jobs that we have. That, that first step is to reflect and understand. We want to ask you, okay, what would you, what would you visualize in this space? If you could snap your fingers and it was exactly how you want it to be, what do you see? How do you feel? What activities do you do? What's gone? Um, what's not frustrating you anymore? And then that's what leads us to being able to find out yeah. goals. And the more specific you can be, the better. Also, like finding out what do you love from the space right now? What's working really good? And then what do you hate? What's causing you frustration? And then we always try to maintain what you love. You know, we don't want to change that, but we will change whatever is causing you frustration. So in this case, they wanted to have a clear desk where they could work. They wanted a paper system because, as you can see, there's a bunch of paper in there and it needs a little bit of organization. They wanted to get rid of all of the quote-unquote crap. They wanted to feel calm and control. And also, they wanted tax season to be easy. Uh, and don't we all want that? Yeah. So the why, which is really important, why do you want to get these things? And her simple statement was, I don't want to live in disorganization anymore. And I can't, I can't do it alone. I need yeah. a fresh start. And that's, that's a great why. And that's why we, where we can come in. So this was the after. <clears throat> As you can see, we created How long did it wanted. take? 
So these are <clears throat> normally, as, as you will see later, paper, it's always, it's the most time consuming of decluttering. So we always leave paper till the end. So this took us one day to declutter and organize the physical space. And then we put all the papers aside. And then it took us another day, six hours, to go through all the paper at once. We went through everything. And then everything became clear, became organized. Everything was ready for taxes. And once this process was finished, guess what? Every single year, it's going to be a piece of cake to do taxes and she can find what she needs when she needs it. She used to spend hundreds of dollars giving a shoebox full of receipts to the accountant every year. Guess what? She paid us one time to do this and this is an investment that is going to be lifetime benefit. So this is how powerful this process is. So we not only did the, um, you know, first two steps of the, the reflecting and understanding, then setting our goals, and then doing the physical decluttering, but then we started the organization process of where are things going to go, how's the paper system going to flow, uh, we put up the you can move ahead. We put up the bulletin board. We put up a mail system for slots so that she, she would label later how it was going to look, but something for incoming, something for outgoing and something that comes from her kids. And then the, the space was literally left with um, knowing where everything was feeling comfortable that she could maintain this system going forward because we're not coming in and telling you how to set it up. We're coming in and asking how best do you work? Do you work best with visual reminders? Do you work best with clear spaces? How, what kind of filing system works for you? What keywords work for you? And we set all those things up. Yeah, one of the questions that we get all the time is, do you work with me or do you work alone? The truth is that 97% of the times we work with the client, with you. Why? Because you are the person who knows how you utilize the space. You are the person who knows what kind of frustrations you are having. And when we are working with you, as Samantha says, we are not imposing a thing. We are asking you a lot of questions, really understanding, and basically pulling out what you already know and helping you set up what you want to set up. And so some of you might be asking, well, this is great, but what do I do if I'm doing this project on my own? And the reality is you can write down before you get started, questions that are going to help get you through. You can also get someone who's unbiased in their opinion to be able to be there to be a body double and say, wait a second, how come you're holding on to all of those CDs? You told me you don't listen to CDs anymore. Do they really fit in your space? So on and so forth. It's a really yeah. basic example. And the, This one took us only two days because there are two organizers with the client. So more hands helping, right? So it's, it's just faster. But mm -hmm. if you do it on your, on your own, you can still do it. It will just take a little bit more of time. So this is another example of something that we optimize. This is in the bathroom. As you see, the frustrations on the left-hand side is that she didn't have, like, everything was on top of everything. And so, this is kind of like middle picture as well. This isn't when we first got, that's not a true before. Yeah, so the, we, we always forget, we forget to take before and after photos. But basically, everything was piled in the closet, as you can see, and it was very difficult to, to take what she needed. Like, she had towels and linens and... Things so, are always falling out. Yeah. So what we did, we just added a few extra shelves. And that's so simple, right? And that made her life way, way easier. And this is the warehouse on the farm where they stored a lot of their personal items, off-season tools, and also products that they were selling for their, for their um, business as well. Um, so over time, it became a place that was, quote unquote, a dumping ground. It became a place where things went to hide and never find again, so that buying a duplicate was actually an easier choice than trying to find that one weed whacker. Um, so basically, you're looking at a bunch of the before pictures. So where do you start when you're looking at this? Here you can see all the weed whackers and extra tools. Um, and the reality is they didn't need these things, but they ended up costing them a lot of money, time, and energy because things weren't organized, nothing had a home, and there was no system. Because sometimes we just want rush to get the job done. We just want to get it done because all we want to do is put our feet up and we've had enough on our plate. But the reality is the longer you let these kinds of things fall, the bigger the project becomes. So the sooner you can invest time in organizing, the sooner you can start saving yourself in the future a lot of time. Yeah, a lot of times we get this. I don't have time to organize. And we always say, why don't you organize so that you have time? So we may spend with you 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours, one day, two day. 
but we're gonna save you time. We guarantee you that we're gonna save you time every single day for the rest of your life. Isn't that worth it? Like if, if you can invest one hour of your time and then you can get that hour back every single day, would you accept that deal? I think this is a really good deal. So change the mindset. You do have time to organize. You need to sit down and organize so that you can have more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this example, this is the in-between uh, with the process that we follow. As you see, the left-hand side is already a little bit uh, organized and then we are just going through the things. And one we, by one, each and everything we touch it because we need to know why is it here? What's yeah. it used for? Does it belong here? Does it belong somewhere else? Do I even need it anymore? Yeah, do I even need it anymore? And that brings to the unwanted items. Majority of the times when we are doing a session like this, there are a lot of items that the person no longer needs. What do you do with those? Well, we facilitate that process for you. Uh, and it's very important if you are doing this on your own that you have arranged how to deal with some unwanted items. You can sell them, you can auction them, you can donate them, uh, or, or you can take them to the landfill if it's garbage. But we always recommend try Land to find last a new life yeah. we always bring as you can see a trailer or a truck and then everything that, that that person no longer needed we put it in the truck and we are opening up space so that we can then organize the things that she needed and then as you see there is a folding table in there that we normally use because it's more comfortable to work at this height and to have to bend down or work on the ground and then the process of decluttering it becomes easier when you know why you are doing this process and what the final goal it was for this barn, her goal was to be able to operate her businesses properly. So she needed a storage area that you will see at the end. She needed some uh, in between for tools and she needed to store like a tractor. So basically, and she needed space to bring a forklift in and out. Yeah. So basically those were her needs. So this is one of the afters so on the left hand side. As you can see, everything is organized by kind. Uh, the machine can go through those aisles to be able to move things easily. You can see at a glance how much stock you have about things and everything is very convenient and organized. When she gets deliveries now, instead of the truck like stopping outside of the van and you have to move everything by hand in the middle of the chaos, now everything has a place and everything goes right away where it belongs. So the maintenance of this system is way, way easier and it takes way less time. And this is looking at it from kind of a, a, a far step on the, the right side. You're seeing kind of where those tools are kept and things in the back. Uh, below, like there's a boat there for recreational and there's some other kids toys and things like that. So that's still a personal storage space because this is a personal farm, but there's no interference between the business and the, and the, the, the personal side of things. You'll also see um, if we go back just uh, on the bottom right there, you've got your recycle bins and garbage. Garbages. This is something that we often forget about. Some of the things that pile up as clutter is often the things that we can let go of very quickly. So paper, plastics, uh, garbages. If you make it really easy to put those things uh, where they belong so they can go out quickly, you limit yourself with how much you have to clean up afterwards. So having those stations are important. Yeah, very, very important. So this is another after. Uh, as, as you can see, the tractor is inside. And then at the end of there, those things that you see, uh, those are like personal belongings that they need to store somewhere. So that's fine. You can have a multi-purpose space like this one, but you can make it work for your specific needs. And that's why it's so important to really reflect about what do I need to happen here? What kind of activities? What am I storing? How can I make this space the best space for my specific needs? And just seeing the white space really allows you to kind of have a breath. You don't walk in and kind of feel like how am I going to find this or where is this now? And this kind of thing, the light is actually reflecting off the floor. It makes it a brighter space to work in. It just gives you a little bit more clarity when it is, when you're head down and in a task, you can find what you need when you need it. This project, it was Samantha, myself and the client, and it took us two days, two full days to do this. How much time do you think she's going to save every single day from now on? I will say hours hours just time how much frustration is she avoiding now how much more free time she's gonna have for work life balance that we were talking in our last presentation when you do a transformation like this one this is going to impact you in every other area of your life it's so important the physical spaces uh home and shelter is a basic human need sometimes we forget how important 
having a good organized space it is for our mental health. So let's just get down to the practicality sides of things. How do you actually do it? So if you could take a moment right now and reflect about a specific space, um, so whether that be your office, whether that be your truck, whether that be um, a basement, um, think is there a space that drives you a little bit crazy or that you think you could take some time to invest in decluttering and organizing it? Just take a minute now and think of that space. Make sure that you write it down because we forget things very easily. Okay, so you write it down there and then try to write why, if you can, like a few words. Why do you want to organize that space? Most of our clients, the main concerns mm -hmm. that they have when they contact us or they reach out is that they feel completely overwhelmed. And I myself can put my hand up and admit that I too at times feel completely overwhelmed. I'm uncertain of where I should start. It's hard to get motivated. It's hard to keep motivation going. And sometimes it feels like there's just not enough time. Like, when am I going to find the time to do this? But as we've stressed, we really believe that the time that you invest in organizing, it pays out for the rest of your life. Majority of the times, we don't have enough time because we are not organized and we are not being efficient. We are spending way too much time looking for things, like going through our day because the tasks that we are supposed to do are not easy because the things are not set in the right spot and it's taking you time to find them time to put them back and things like that so getting organized can bring a lot of time so yep so now that you have your space it would be important just like uh the first example that we showed you to define the goals so when they define the goals for the office they were talking very specifically about what they wanted to see how they wanted to feel they wanted to feel in control they wanted to have a paper system that they could follow. They wanted to feel calm and in, and in their space, knowing where everything was. So can you give us an example, Emilio? So when we set goals, uh, there is one formula that I'm pretty sure the majority of people know about. It's called SMART goals. And basically, it forces you to be specific, it to be measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So you need to have a deadline. So this is one example. I want to have a clear and clean office. Okay, that's great, but how do you take action on that? It's not specific enough, it doesn't have a, a, a date. So a better example would be to have a clear and clean office by January 31st of 2019. Okay, now we have a date, but still, if the office is a little bit big, like where in the office, like what is the task that you have how to do? How do you get started? How do you get started? It's, it's how do you break the project into specific tasks? So a better one would be to have a clear desk. So now we have a, a surface, a desk, and then a filing system set up by January 31st and scheduled a, a date to tweak and maintain the new system on March 1st. So now you have a two specific areas of your office that most likely are the ones that are causing your frustration. So now you can measure, did I do it? Yeah, I did it or not. Is it attainable? Yeah, it's attainable. I have a few days to do it. Uh, and then I have set up a, a, a time for maintenance. Is it a time bound? Yeah, I have a deadline. So this is an example of something that can help you be more realistic. So when it comes to goals, maybe you want to take a little bit of time to think about them. And an exercise that you can do is try to, to frame your goal, like following this system. And I think, honestly, this is really, really helpful and we do not start any project if we don't have a clear understanding of how this looks like because if we don't understand how do we get started it's very difficult mm -hmm. so the next step so you've reflected you're aware and you've set some goals some ideas you have a clear visualization of how you'd like to change that space the next step is decluttering so when you get started decluttering if you can move forward it's really important to understand, well, what's the decluttering process? And we like this quote, we use this in our last talk as well, because Clutter is Anonymous basically says that it clutter is anything that we don't need, use, or want that takes up our space, time, energy, or that it destroys the peace of mind that we have. And we think that's really important because the decluttering aims to solve this problem. Decluttering is not telling you to let go. Decluttering is telling you to ask yourself, is this important to me? Do I need this glass anymore? 
Is it, yes, I do, it adds a lot of value to my life. Maybe what I don't need is this bracelet. I have 20 bracelets in my, in my dresser and you know, I could live without one and it's taking up too much space in my jewelry drawer. Great. Yeah, and always think that it doesn't make sense to organize things that you don't need. Why are you spending time and energy organizing things that you don't need? Mm -hmm. And so we always start with a physical station. When we start decluttering, uh, as Emilio mentioned in the first example, we bring in a folding table. We do this for a number of reasons. We want to have a clear working space. We want to have a workspace that's at the right height. There's nothing worse than you being on your knees, digging through a box, bending over in the wrong way. You all need your backs for your farm. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we save that. So the folding table provides us with a nice clean space and it also helps us keep focused. We're only working on what's on the table. And then underneath the table, we can have go-to things that make our job really easy, like a recycling, a garbage, a donate box, also our little kit we bring along that has tapes, markers, pens, exacto knives, anything that you might need that helps facilitate the project is there because we treat this like work. This is a job and this is something that we need to be prepared for. Whereas if we just kind of go at it haphazardly, you probably aren't going to get done what you'd like to. Yeah. And on this photo, you can see we are doing a paper session. So you can see piles of paper and we use posits to put like headings. Uh, and that's why the, the table is full. This is an extra table. We have two. So this is the secondary one. Mm -hmm. But it's very important that comfort level that Samantha was talking about. And then during the decluttering space, just like you saw in the barn or like you saw in the office, where do you start? So for example, this bedroom, where do you start? When there's so many things in the room, what's the best starting place? And the reality is there's no wrong choice here. We do try and start with storage spaces in a room, so a closet or maybe a dresser, and then we pick that space on the wall and then we touch everything in 360 degrees until we've made it back to that space. And then that way we have, we have set intention for everything that's in that room we don't skip over anything we don't say oh you don't need to open up that drawer I did that a couple months ago no 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 we go through everything because then you know what you have where it is what space is available for you and at the end of the day your project is 100% finished yeah so in this project for example uh, we had the table in the corridor because we didn't have space in the room one of us was with the client Okay, like making the decisions. And the other of us, in that case, it was me. Uh, I was just looking at the room and then I try as much as I can to go through categories. So I try to get all the clothes at once. I try to get all the office, uh, like pens and papers and stuff like that, office supplies at once. If I see tools, all the tools at once, as much as I can, because that way you have a, a, a very good idea of how much stuff you have. Okay. So dealing with paper clutter again, uh, as we talked about, it is the most time consuming next to children's toys. Children's toys, because they're so tiny, you can have a million pieces of Lego. But dealing with paper, it takes a lot of time. So as Emilio said about collecting categories, if there's paper in the space, we recommend taking all the paper and putting it together and not going through the paper until the physical surroundings have been looked after. If you find something, a piece of paper that you need to take action right away, we always recommend to have like a to take action pile, a little one that you put it in there so that you can take action right away. But all the rest of the papers that need to be filed or gone through, but they are not a priority important, we normally put them aside and then once you have the space finished, that's when you can take the time to go through papers and you have the space to start creating those piles. Um, as Emilio said too, as you're going through things and you're touching everything in a room, things pop into your mind. Oh, I have to return that library book. Oh, you know, this, this uh, jumper, it belongs to my sister-in-law. Oh, this Tupperware belongs at the, the community church. So we keep a to-do list because what we want to avoid you doing is saying, okay, I'm just going to take the Tupperware and go set it by the car. I'll take the jumper and I'll go put it in my purse because I'm going to say, and that creates kind of a butterfly effect. You end up bouncing around throughout yeah. the space and you lose focus on what you're trying to work on. So we're not saying let those things not get accomplished, but let's write them down on a list. And at the end of the session of decluttering, you know everything that's popped into your mind and you know where those items are. So if it's best that it goes to the car, if it's best that it goes to the purse, that happens after you finish decluttering. Yeah. And and this to-do list is also very helpful because as you see, there is a time estimation and then it's really important for you to, to put how long it's going to take because that way when we have 10 things, if you need 100 hours to complete them and you don't have 100 hours, 
majority of the people become aware. And then they say, you know what, I don't need to do this project. And then they give themselves the permission to let th those things go because realistically speaking, they know that they won't be able to do it. They choose not to spend time and energy doing those things because they have other things that are more, more, more important. So this is a really powerful exercise and, and we always recommend to do it. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happens when we're working with people and probably you've experienced this, we have ourselves, mm -hmm. that you come across an item that it's unimaginable to think of I don't need it anymore, but how do I let it go? And so we've come up with 12 questions for you to ask yourself when you are holding something that is difficult for you to make a decision on. Um, and it, the decision doesn't have to be that you're letting it go. This decision could be, no, I feel very confident that I'm going to keep this. And these questions, although very simplistic, really get to the heart of the the yeah. matter it's really important also when you are doing the decluttering uh, there are different categories of things like if you for example you love books and you have a really hard time deciding about books make sure that you pile the books to a corner and don't get started with books get started with something that is easier because you will build that confidence that decision making process will become easier and then all the maybes all the sentimental items you can always go back after and then you can decide on them the goal here is not to let go of things. The goal here is to make your space functional. Sometimes if you have a lot of storage space and you have enough storage space to store all your things, maybe you don't have to let go of anything. But if you don't have a lot of storage space and you have more things than storage space, that's when the problem of clutter starts to appear. So always that relationship between storage space and, and stuff, it's always nice to look at, at, at that. Do you have enough storage space? Yes or no? So again, I, uh, we were talking about unwanted items and it's really important to have a plan of, of attack. What are you going to do with them? And one of the things that we like about bringing a trailer or a truck is that in spaces that are already full of things, if you don't have the ability to remove those items from the space, it becomes very difficult and challenging to organize that space because all the, those unwanted items are taking up physical space. So it's either you have an extra space in your house that you can pile things there or maybe in the garage or maybe just take them away right away. Maybe put them in your truck or maybe rent a U-Haul or uh, whatever makes things easier for, for removing those items. Also, when we work with people who we know there's going to be a lot of things to, to leave the space, we can call and people will come to the home as well. So making those arrangements, if you know you're decluttering on Monday and three weeks from now, maybe calling someone like the Canadian Diabetes or the Salvation Army or your local charity or church and saying, listen, at the end, in three weeks, on the end of Monday, um, around two o'clock, I'm going to have a bunch of donations. If you're available, I would love to be able to donate them to your charity. And then that way you're removing one task, you're delegating something, but you're also making sure that those things aren't staying in your space. Yeah, and then there is another thing that, another question that we get a lot. Can I make money from my unwanted items? And the answer is, sometimes you can. So the best way, if you have expectations about how much you want to get, is always to private sell those items. Make sure that you take a nice photo, you take measurements, you publish that on like a Gigi, Facebook, Marketplace, eBay, whatever platform you want to use, let go, and then make sure that you allow yourself some time to sell them. You have to spend the time doing that, you have to invite people over and things like that, but that's the best way to get the most value from your items. The second option that you have is auction. Auction is a good way to remove, there are two ways. The auction company can come to your house and they can do a catalog of things and they can facilitate the process for you. The other option is normally what we do, we remove all the items from your home and then we take them to the auction company. They run an auction and then they send you a check. Majority of the auction companies, they charge you by lot. So normally three to five dollars for every lot and they charge normally between 25 and 40 percent of, of their revenue. You can so, also do consignment. You can also do donation. There's a lot of ways to let go. There are a lot of ways that you can explore, right? So it's, it's important to explore them before getting started. So after you've decluttered, you've eliminated the things that you no longer need, you've gone through and you've assessed what you have, um, now's the time to get organized. So what's the organized look like? And by the way, it never comes before decluttering. You never organize because as Emilio said, what's the point of organizing the 100 books if really you only planned on keeping 20 of them? So it's really important that you declutter and then get started organizing. Yeah, when you go through the decluttering process, it's a very emotional process and it's also a good process to help you become aware of 
the lifestyle that you have and the lifestyle that you want to live. And going through the items is going to help you decide, is this item going to help me in my life moving forward from now? And if the answer is no, that's an unwanted item. And then you can deal with it after, like you can sell it, donate it, whatever, but that doesn't belong in the space that you are organizing. So take it out of there. So we like to use temporary labels when we've changed a space as we've been going through and decluttering. If we've changed where something normally lives, it, it's home. Uh, so as you can see in the, the cupboard below the television, there's some green painter's tape with temporary labels so that that person isn't frustrated when they wake up in the morning. They're like, oh yeah, the socks aren't kept on the top drawer anymore. They're kept on the bottom left because X, Y, and Z fits better in the top. So it's great to give your brain a little bit of break to learn that new system. Uh, uh, and it's also very helpful for if anybody is helping you in a certain space. So if you're organizing an office, labels can be very helpful so that they're not constantly coming to you and being like, hey, where, where do you keep the seed? Hey, where do you keep the shovel? Hey, where do you keep the extra work gloves? You don't want people having to do that. You want them to be able to walk into a space and know how they can help themselves with those mundane questions. Yeah, in our past talk about work-life balance, we were talking how important communication is in here, it applies the exact same. If you are organizing a space where many other people are using that space, and if you organize a space how you like it or how you function, but you don't involve them in the process, guess what's going to happen? They are going to be upset because you didn't ask them and they don't know where things are. They are not going to maintain that system that you have created and the clarity is going to come back because no one really knows how to use the space and you are the only one who knows that. So you're putting a lot of pressure and responsibility on yourself and you are creating a lot of family tension or tension between your like co-workers or, or whoever is using that space. So it's very, very important to communicate what you are doing, asking for inputs from other people and then try to create something that is common. Compromise as much as you can between each other to find that happy balance, okay? Um, one thing that we always uh, let people know is, is that we don't uh, advocate for people to shop before they have gone through this process. Uh, a lot of people will, oh, I'm just going to buy these shelves or I'm going to buy these clear bins uh, and that's going to help me get organized. But what we can tell you after working with hundreds of people yeah. is that you already have everything you need in your home to get decluttered and organized. And if there's something missing, so for example, the picture on the right, maybe we want to have uh, better totes that all match and, and, and are see-through. That's great, but we're, we weren't going to buy those until we see the final result. What was left over? Okay, now I know I need four bins. They need to be this size to fit in this closet. I want them to stack on top of each other. So the money I spend on buying that product is going to be for the perfect product as opposed to before I decluttered, maybe I buy six bins because I, it looks like I need six and I don't get the right size because I didn't know I was going to keep them in the closet. And then you end up wasting, wasting time, energy, and, and it, shouldn't, it just shouldn't happen before you declutter. Yeah. And always measuring things. Remember to measure things because you can buy something and if it doesn't fit, you're wasting time and money and you have to do another trip to the store. So it's frustrating, okay? So once you finish with that, that's when the most fun part of the process for a lot of people start, is the beautifying aspect of things, displaying the things that you love. This is an example of a project that we did. We did a garage, and we ran into these two, uh, two posters that you see on That's the wall, three. actually three of them. So they were sitting there in a corner, and then uh, basically what happened is that they didn't have wall space in the house to hang them, but he was... Uh, exercising here every single day and he loved those posters because they reminded him of university he loves what he does what, what he does and we asked him like why don't you put them up here that you can see them every day I know that the walls are not finished and it's but, in your gym yeah but once you finish the garage if you do some time you can just put them back up but don't put them away if you love them display them and he never thought about doing that so he was so happy and then he said, I just can't believe how much joy I'm getting every time I exercise. I just look at those posters and I am so happy. So always display the things that you love. One of the things that held them back was that the garage wasn't finished. They had this idea that, oh, well, the walls aren't finished. You can see the insulation. And that's why they didn't hang the pictures. Mm -hmm. So this is another example of uh, an art gallery. And basically she loves entertaining and then she loves serving tea to people. And this was a nice display for her. 
to have everything accessible, but as you see, everything looks beautiful, very colorful, and everything that she needs is right there. But it's appealing, visually appealing. And this was a client that uh, had, a, again, a whole bunch of mixed matched picture frames up in a closet on the top shelf. When we went through the decoloring process and we said, okay, tell us about this frame, tell us about this picture. And she said, oh, like, I would love to hang them. I want to see them, but, you know, they're not in the same, they, they're just like too mixed matched. And we said, do you love them? And they, she said, yes. And, I'm, and then we said, well, why don't you do something like a collage? Uh, it's become really common. And it's not about what anybody else thinks. This is your space. And if you love these pictures and seeing these pictures bring you joy, then let's get them up on the wall because they're not serving you taking up space on the top shelf on the closet. Yeah. And again, she was very happy. She never thought about doing this. And at the end of the day, it's all about you and how you feel in your space and displaying the things that you like it's very important. It's like making the space yours and it's what's going to help you go through your day with more happiness. And the last step, of course, is the maintenance part. It's often the one that's the most looked over because you've worked so hard, you're exhausted, you're mentally drained. The last thing you're thinking about is, oh, okay, well, now that it's finished and it looks great, how do I maintain it? And we think that there's some simple things that you can do to be able to set up new routines, like having an accountability person, having a time scheduled where you can reflect on the space, maybe in your calendar written down, um, and, but also always asking yourself about your how habits moving forward. When you are out and you maybe like to shop or you like to go to yard sales, mm -hmm. you need to start asking yourself before you're bringing more things into your space, can you afford it? Yeah, and we are not only talking about the money. We are talking about can you afford the time that this item is going to take from you? Can you afford the space? Like, do you have the actual space to hold this item? Do you have the energy that this item will take from you? Like, you have to dust it, you have to move it, you have to maintain it. And sometimes just looking at that item, that's already energy that is going away because that person is maybe frustrated. Maybe uh, it's a reminder of something that they need to do and that they haven't done. Uh, it's just the connection, the emotional and mental connection for, to physical items. It's real and it's so strong that sometimes people don't feel well and they don't know why. And it's because of physical items that don't belong in the space. So we want to take a minute here and say, what's your project like? What challenges are you facing? And we know that there's the challenge because we're not there in the room with you to answer right away. But we want to let you know that this is probably one of the most important parts of the presentation is if you have a challenge and you're uncertain of how to get started or uh, how this system can apply specifically to, you know, that space you're thinking of, that's why we're here. Um, so what's your project? What are you looking to do? What, what do you want to accomplish? Yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you have any like uh, suggestions or questions or something that you need an answer for, please feel free to share them with us uh, through our website email or you can tell the organizer and they can contact us. We are happy to do a follow-up video answering those questions live so that you can have a really clear answer like live, like if we were there with you. And hopefully you can name that project and hopefully you can get started changing those things that that you want to change in your space. And that's us. Uh, we're going to, I think we have a trailer to show you uh, about uh, a client that we did, that her, her name is Judy, and we helped her declutter and organize her entire apartment, and we recorded the whole process. So you can watch that trailer. And if you like this presentation, we would really, really love if you can leave us a review on Google. You can just go to Keda Value Professional Organizers on Google, and then you can just click on write a review. And again, if you have any questions, you can share them there and we will be very happy to answer them. Okay? So here is the trailer. Oh yeah, let's jump. Let's do it. Loose it up, loose it up. Okay. I think you are just ready. I'm, that's why I have you because I'm stuck as, I've, I've just been doing everything over and over again the same way for so many years. I'm not getting help that I need to get things sorted and um, decluttered and, and organized. I needed to just go through everything completely and say, what is working for me now, what isn't? Yeah. And I've never, I, I mean, I can organize to a point, but that's kind of where it's always gotten. I get to a point and then that's it. Well, let's get you unstuck. Oh, yes, yes, yes.
just jump. Okay. <laughs> we just jump. Loose it up. Loose it up. Loose it up. This is probably the most nerve-wracking room. Yeah. It's also exciting. I know. It's it's nerve-wracking. It's exciting. My mental health so much. This was so cool. Hanger. I mean, what else do you have in your bedroom? It's hangers. Yeah. <laughs> gone. And gone. And gone. It's a lot of weight off your shoulders to to let go of. To. Um, have a space that you feel comfortable and you go home and relax in, but also if you need to get busy, you know where things are, you don't have to be always stumbling over things and um, saying, oh, I've got to get to this, I've got to get to that, you know. Well, thank you very much, Judy. You're welcome. Thank you. So that was a trailer for Judy's story. Yeah. It's an eight part mini series. So we tried to make the episodes uh, like 15 minutes or less. Um, but she was a really, really brave and awesome client who allowed us to uh, videographer the entire sessions that we did with her. And we worked through an entire apartment in eight sessions. You're able to see the before, the frustrations, the challenges, and then us working through each individual space. Uh, yeah. So it's a really good insight into what the process looks like in real in a real space. Yeah. Well, and time is up. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us. We hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. And sorry that we couldn't be here in person, but we are looking forward to hearing your questions. Okay. Have a great day. Take care.